It's your own time you're wasting. Ramblings from Beyond the Classroom with Marie and Jodie. Hello and welcome to It's Your Own Time You're Wasting. I'm Marie, English teacher, and my co-host is Jodie. And I'm a maths teacher. Welcome back. Uh, today we are talking about behaviour management um, mm. and our title this week is Three Strikes and You're Out. How did you find behaviour management, Marie, when you were a teacher? I, I have to say I found it one of the most difficult parts of the mm. job and my one technique was to get the pupils on my side. Agreed. Yeah. That was it. That was the only technique I had. And if Absolutely. I ever failed to get them on my side, <laughs> I was then lost. But I was very lucky because I was a Senko in mm. my first job. So I only had classes of 20 and I always had a teaching assistant in with me. Oh, okay. And so that made a huge difference yeah. to the behaviour management. Um, and and those, those pupils were sort of willing to to like you and trust you yes definitely yeah. what about you Jodie how do you do you find it I just don't feel like I ever got it right um Same. I so when I was an NQT I was in a department that was mostly male which is quite mm. common in maths departments there's mm. much more male maths teachers than female maths teachers yeah that's much more unusual in an English department yeah. Um, and there were other women, but they were all part time and towards the end of their career. And all the men were in their 50s and kind of, yeah, a lot older than me. Yeah. And my NQT mentor was the deputy head. Sorry, assistant head. She was assistant head. So I wasn't getting behavior management right. And I kind of went to my mentor and was like, I'm not really yeah. getting this right. Yeah. And she was like, well, this is what I do. And I was like, but that's not going to work because I'm not the assistant head. Yeah. So I went to the other men in the department and they said this is what I do but how a 50 year old man can mm. do behavior management is not the same as a 23 year old woman no, no so until the person who I describe as my mentor started which was a October half term I just had no advice mm. I just had no idea how to start it and even then he was a he and that is different and he was yeah. five years into his teaching at that point so he had really really good skills and it, I just couldn't quite make it work. Yeah, I think that is the really tricky bit when you're new and you're not mm. established. Yeah. Once you're established, it does get easier, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's probably true. What do you think, Jodie, is SLT's role in behaviour management? I think it's actually quite difficult because you need them to support you and you need to be able to escalate to them, but without undermining yourself yeah absolutely. so I had an experience I'd sent a kid out and the head department sent them back in because they were like it's too early in the lesson to be sending someone out and I'd sent him out because he'd come in like an idiot yeah so I'd sent him outside to cool down and then he was going to come back in and in the head of department's defense he thought he was out for the rest of the lesson which he wasn't he was out for a cool down right right but the kid thought he was out for the rest of the lesson and had told the head of department that so he sent him back into my classroom and I was like but you're undermining me here yeah because he's not out for the rest of the lesson he's out to cool down because he came into my classroom effing and blinded and I'm not yeah. having it no no so that wasn't not. right but yeah, then but... he was trying to be supportive I guess yeah yeah sure but yeah you have to be really from the same page don't you really with SLT and yeah behavior management um, and I think if you're in a school where there's a bit of us and them between the teachers and SLT that's not going to work mm. I, Jodie, once worked with a deputy head yeah. who was an ex-policeman and he was mm. excellent at discipline. He never, ever raised his voice, but he had this presence. And the, yeah. the pupils that he came into contact with all the time who were consistently breaking the rules and so on absolutely loved him, even yeah. though he was the disciplinarian. Yeah. But what he said, and this is going back a few years, you, you'll be able to tell, what he said was, first half term, Anybody does anything wrong, send them home. Mm. That's what he did. Anything. Uniform, chewing gum, swearing. Oh, wow. Home. And what he said was, you inconvenience the parents, the parents yeah. do the rest for you because they don't want to be called up at work to be told their child's going home. 
fair play that makes and that sense that seemed to work yeah. yeah but as the years went on and the rules changed about you know sending people home and stuff like that yeah he, he just couldn't do it anymore um I don't and think... I think kind of the challenge is, I'm not saying we should beat children, no. obviously, but we don't actually have that much power unless no. the parents are in, in line with us. Like, we can give them after school detention, we can give them this, we can mm-hmm. give them that, but the parents can get them out of 90% of it. Yeah. So there is actually no power. I had that quite a lot, Jodie. I was rung by parents saying, oh, no, they can't come to this mm-hmm. after school detention. They've got, they've got a dentist appointment. And you think, yeah. no, they don't. <laughs> Jodie, yes. how how do you feel you were equipped by your teacher training before you even got a job in a school? Oh, oh there's a story here, Marie. Oh, I thought um, there might be. <laughs> right. In true fashion, we have to go back in time to start this story. Okay. Um, I'm 14. Uh, no, 13. 13. I was okay. year eight. So I just had my 13th birthday. Beautiful summer. Really hot. We were having a water fight at lunchtime, as you do. Um, as you do. And I should preface this with, I've never told my mum the whole truth about this. So here's my confession, if my mum is listening. Um, someone dared me to throw a bottle of water over our head teacher. And being 13, I did. He turned round to me, <gasps> sent me to the office. I turned up at the office, already crying. And my sister was there, coincidentally putting up her GCSE artwork. Oh. So I just burst into tears i'm hysterical my sister's completely unsympathetic mm-hmm. she be. i've just thrown water over the head teacher mm-hmm. i deserve everything i'm getting um and the head teacher i have to wait there for about 10 minutes the head teacher comes and he just looks at me a complete mess and my sister sat there to be fair to my sister she stayed with me mm. giving me like such a what have you done you idiot look <laughs> and he says you can go to my sister and he says I think we both agree you've done something really stupid today Jodie (laughs) yes I I think we've established that your sister's probably going to tell your parents about it so I won't be phoning home and I think I'm going to leave it up to your parents to decide what the consequence is you can go back to your lessons (gasps) that was it and I was like have I I mean, I've not got away with this, but like, I'm not, what's happening here? So the story I've told my parents is that I was aiming for someone else and missed uh, and I didn't do it on purpose. So that's my confession, mum. Sorry. Um, But then fast forward 10 years and I'm doing my teacher training and we have a lecture on behaviour management and my best friend at uni was deaf. So we always sat on the front row so that she could hear properly. And, um, we were sat on the front row and the person to do the behaviour management came in and it was my old head teacher. And I was like, oh, great. And the so one does you this poured the water all over. The one I poured the water all over. So he goes through this fantastic lecture all about kind of all the different things. And then he ends with this story. And I'm just sitting there like, please don't recognise it. Please don't recognise me. <laughs> about when punishment isn't necessary and when someone can self-punish and right. tells this story about this little girl who got overexcited and threw water all over him and that she didn't need a punishment because she knew straight away what had happened and there was no need to punish her because she knew what was going to happen and I was like please don't recognize me please don't recognize me and he went through this whole story and they caught my eye and went and I'm pretty confident that girl's now a teacher and I was like Oh my god, he knows it's me. <laughs> oh, so did you speak to him afterwards. I did. And I got a picture with him. Um and he said, I I was I right? Did you like self-punish? And I was like, I still yes. feel really guilty about it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um so that was my uh behaviour management training, and I don't think I listened to any of it because I was so mortified. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. Know. so so you were quite um a naughty kid in a way I was scampy I think is the right word because I just didn't always think through my consequences and I just did stupid stuff I was disorganized I'm dyslexic so yeah and Mm -hmm. I wasn't diagnosed as being dyslexic while I was at school no I was at university so nobody kind of didn't have any kind of support so I was just completely disorganized so it was always forgetting homework and stuff and then I'd do stupid things like eat 17 blocks of sugar and then have a giggling fit 
Like <laughs> that happened in a science lesson. Um, so I just didn't always think through what yes. I was doing. Yes. And so you I see, didn't mean to be naughty. Do you think, though, Jodie, that helped you with your behaviour management? Because, you see, I was Miss Goody Two-Shoes, never even got a detention in the whole of my school life. Yeah. And when they used to do daft things, I'd just think, why are you doing that? I didn't understand it. See, I could understand daft, but I couldn't understand disrespectful. No. Because I was, like... Maybe, I mean, obviously, it's not the most respectful thing to pour water over your head teacher. But um, I was never, like, purposefully disrespectful. And yeah. but because I'm not like that to most people, you know, that wasn't because they were my teachers and I was a kid. It was because I didn't want to be disrespectful to other people. Um, water incident as an exception. Yeah. Uh, but so I didn't understand disrespectful and I didn't understand people who didn't want to learn. But I did understand people who were just daft because that is me. Yeah. And was quite good at dealing with that because I could kind of go, if you do this, this is going to be the consequence. Yeah. And not kind of like the consequences you're getting detention, but the consequences you won't be trusted or this or that. Like a larger consequence. Yeah. Yeah. And that's your decision at the end of the day. But this is what's going to happen if you don't do what I suggest. Yeah. And how did you go on with things like um, enforcing uniform rules and things like that? I hate uniform. Me too. I understand the need for it, but you just spend so much time tucking your shirt in. Um, I've heard the the theory that if you are really strict with your uniform, it gives the kids something to rebel against. Ah, right. By so having that's... too short a skirt or too yeah, short a tie. Yeah. Not sure I believe it. Five what were you strikes, like with uniform? Bored. Yeah. Totally bored of it, Jodie. And also... Um, I used, you know, this thing about you must wear your blazer unless you've got permission Mm. to take it off. I used to say, listen, in my classroom, if you want to take your blazer off, take your blazer off. Yeah. Because I couldn't be doing with all the hands going up all the time. Me, it's me. And stuff like that is just so controlling, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Just. But I did get really fed up with the tucking your shirt in business and actually had them convinced one year that we were bringing in a new uniform for the year after. That was... um, the shirt actually sewn onto the underwear so they couldn't that's a great idea the shirt. as a mum actually i'm thinking of sewing underpants to the bottom of every single one of harry's shirts how would you get it on well you'd have to have the shirt unbuttoned put your oh, legs yeah. in first and then put your arms in and then button it i've thought it through yeah you have it's doable you have it's doable <laughs> yeah so you, do you when you really iron it do you also iron the boxes then yeah, you, you, you could iron the boxes. Okay. I don't iron boxes as a rule, but if they're attached, I think it would yeah. only be fair. Yeah. Because otherwise, yeah. where do you start? I'm just not sure about PE. That's, yeah. that's the thing where it falls down. Or maybe on PE days, they're allowed to have an unattached shirt. Unattached, yeah. Yeah. Special so PE that, shirt. That was the, it was those sort of mundane, everyday things that yeah. got, ground me down, really, with behaviour management. Because you don't that often have massive incidents to deal with no. do you Although, it was equipment was the one for me oh yeah like especially like if you have specialist equipment that you need in maths mm. i'd be like right next monday you need a compass right mm. next monday you and i'd tell them every lesson leading up that they needed a compass and then no yeah. one would have a pair of compasses and you'd be like yeah yeah i know it's the simple things isn't it that mm. that actually is hard It's your own time you're wasting. So why not stick the kettle on, put your feet up and have a cuppa? Ah, bliss. So today our guest on our behaviour management programme is Sarah. Sarah, tell us a bit about yourself. Hi guys, I'm Sarah. Um, I started off my career as a chemist and then I became a science teacher and now I am the marketing manager for Beyond Secondary Resources. Nice. So all that awesome stuff you see on Facebook, that's all Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my team, yeah. And that little, little plug there for the uh, social media. So how did you find behaviour management, Sarah, when teaching? Do you know what? It was one of the aspects that I quite enjoyed because I think I was all right at it, actually. Mm-hmm. Um when I first started, I remember I remember uh, in university when I was doing my PGCE um, and they told us about, you know, like the three strikes when you're out sort of, mm. sort of 
system mm. that we all are so familiar with. I do remember being a bit bewildered because I was like, right, I understand like there's a, something and then it escalates and then it escalates and then you have to deal with it. I do remember the first time as an NQT getting a kid to stay behind because they, you know, they've been locking around mm. in my lesson. I remember thinking, hang on a minute. No one's ever taught me what you do when, when you've got them. <laughs> the rest of the course is gone. I just stood there and I'm like, oh, I don't know. I can't. I can't <laughs> <the pop. laughs> you do that. So I just had a little little word like, uh, and then sent them on their way. But I did find that if you got them on side, which like mm. you mentioned, Marie, yeah. if you can get a kid on side, then they don't want to misbehave for you to some extent. Mm. You've yeah. got that advantage as a younger teacher, I think. You know, because they want to impress yeah, you. Yes, and... you're more likely to get that, on you? And mm. I used to find if I ever sent them out quite a powerful question, instead of having a go at them or whatever, it's just to say, are you okay? What's the matter? And very yeah. often there would be tears. And you'd yeah. find out something had happened either overnight or earlier in the day that had sort of set, put them off kilter a bit. And then yeah. that's how the behaviour was manifesting. Oh, I like that. Mm. So... As I sort of progressed through my career, mm. so I started off in quite a nice leafy village school mm. and uh, like sort of big behaviour incidences that I could remember were things like kids selling contraband chocolate at great time, <gasps> selling busy pop. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, that's so naughty. Um, <laughs> really? And then I would have been buying it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. One lad, he used to sell milk tray or um, and he used to be able to buy them singly. Individual. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. <laughs> so then I remember, so I was a science teacher at that school and then I went to become a head of science at, a, at an SEN school where it's marketed as an SEN school, but it was, it was really more of a behavioral school. Mm. And uh, I remember thinking my behavior management is excellent because, you know. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, well, actually what had happened was I'd really just worked in a very, very, very nice school. To start ah. with. Yeah. I went to this school and I was like, well, three strikes and you're out. And this is a system that's always worked for me. And uh, I just thought, wow, three strikes and the whole class is out in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. It isn't going to be working for me anymore. No. And I remember, no, I'll stick to my rigid system. I will do this and it will work. It's always worked for me. And, uh, and it really didn't. And it was the teaching assistants that took yeah. me to one side. And said, yeah. Um, kids swear in this school. Not only do they swear, they will swear at you. And I remember thinking, well, I'm not going to accept that no. as a teacher. Um, but they're in a behavioural setting for a reason, aren't they? Yeah, I guess so. But does that mean you have to lower your standards? Yeah, that's what I struggled with. Yeah. And I thought, I'm not lowering my standards because I have high aspirations and they're conflicting ideals yeah. to me. But it's not about lowering standards. It's about understanding why they're like that mm. what's led them to be like I that guess, yeah. particularly with swearing is sometimes like I swear more than my parents because it's just part of my words and it doesn't have the same impact as it would if my parents or my grandparents yeah swore. yeah um and like I think I heard my grandma swear once in her life mm. because it just wasn't done and so yeah. it's kind of like maybe it is just more cultural that they swear at that and by cultural yeah. I mean like the culture of the behavior school yeah mm. yeah yeah and yeah. maybe you've got to pick your battles as well when you're a teacher and you're and you're teaching and you've got to teach the exam and you've got to get a certain mm. amount of curriculum covered as yeah. a teacher you've anything that disrupts you from that sort of single track of what you have to do is an annoyance it can irk mm, you definitely and, you know you've spent time planning you've spent time yeah do your marking and all of this and anything that deviates from that is a problem because mm. let's say you've got 30 kids in front of you if one of them is misbehaving they are a fly in the ointment in that situation yeah. you know, they're a fly in the ointment but as i've got older and i think about why kids might do that and i've heard too many stories of just sad stories of kids you know mm. and then you think you know, that kid might be a young carer. They might have had yeah. their whole family's laundry that morning. They've come in not wearing school uniform. Mm, they've just yeah. been everyone's ironing or they've not had breakfast or yeah. had heating. Yeah. And they're, they're acting up because they've got so much on their plate, maybe even more mm. than each has ever had on their plate. And they're mm, yeah. in a bad mood and they're acting out. Well, then that doesn't seem as important about attainment and getting their exam results yeah that's, got yeah, that's true so as I've got older I, I sort of see it from a more holistic 
point of view. Mm. Mm. And I do think it's the challenge, isn't it, to understand everything that's going on in a kid's life. And you can't understand everything. But for some kids, coming to school is an achievement. So you shouldn't go on at them about the fact that they haven't done the homework. Yeah, I I feel the same. And because I was teaching SEN in my early career... Mm. I, I did I did try and understand that we used to I tell you what I used to do this is one of my strategies on a Monday morning when they answered the register we did what did you do over the weekend and they had to give us a summary of mm. what they'd done over the weekend but it gave me a real insight into their lives which then helped me with the behavior management yeah. because yeah. you know the things they were getting up to were just unbelievable like oh miss um we 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 ran across the golf course because we wanted the police to chase us <laughs> and you know whoever gets the helicopter up after them wins this this was the saturday entertainment yeah so then then you you get a, a bigger picture of where they're coming from and it, i think that really helps with behavior management yeah oh, bad miss your dad's nicked a load of carpet do you need some what color do you want like, and <laughs> um, I love it. And uh, oh, no, one of one of the schools I taught at was really near uh, quite a famous um, festival site. And then when people used to leave tents, like Miss, we've got two man tents, four man tents. You could like, <laughs> <laughs> don't you find the mischievous ones? Don't you find them just so likable? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, they really are. So yeah. that was me. I was a mis- mis- yeah mischievous one. I was a mischievous one for sure. Yeah, a lovable rogue. Yeah. 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 What do you guys think of the kind of school mandated behaviour management system? You know, where you've got like a consequence board up in the classroom or like you have to write in their planner every time they misbehave. There's kind of lots of variations of the same yes, thing, isn't there it? Yes, there are. And there is always a school-wide policy. Well, you say that, but of the three schools I worked in, two of them didn't have one. Really? That, that is why one of them me. got closed down. Ah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Um, okay the the my first school didn't really have one like it had a like really bad one Mm. and it had a like rewards policy but it didn't have kind of a low level one yeah so it had the extreme but it didn't have the like middle and then yeah the one of the schools I worked in had nothing right it behavior was terrible um yeah there was literally nothing I think the whole thing needs a bit of a rejig, if I'm being honest. I think, mm. you know, with, for academic success, you put differentiation in place. You do. There's not one lesson will fit every child. Yeah. Why would yeah. one behaviour system fit every child? I completely yeah. agree. Because the thing that I find with the three strikes you're out or the consequence board or whatever, you know, version of that it is, is if the limit is five, the kid will get to four and stop. And that is 100% what I would have done. Oh, right. So you pushed it to the limits, but you didn't go over the line. Not so much. Like, I wouldn't have consciously pushed it to the limit. Right. But when I got to four, I was, like, with it enough to know to keep my head down and shut up. Mm. So I think knowing individual kids in your class, that's of benefit. Mm. So yeah. uh, some of the places I've worked, you know, you write the kid's name on the board and then when they've got yeah. like a yeah. tally chart after them to a certain point, that's when, mm. you know, it gets dealt with. But then I found some kids see that as a badge of honour and they get the name mm-hmm. on the board and they're like looking around for approval for yeah. the dates and like, yeah. look, I've made yeah. it, I've made it. So then I, I'd do stuff with particular kids like that. I'd get my my board marker, mm. I'd go over to my... the the lab bench because they've always got like a shiny Mm. top to them rather than writing it on the board I'd write it on their I just subtly write it they know they've got it I know they've got it I'd give them a little I'm quite good with my eyebrows my eyebrows (laughs) and um give them a knowing look I've achieved what I want to achieve and they've not got the audience so quite often that would work yeah that was really I had that at one school we had um perspex on every desk it was really really good idea actually because you could get them to do like rough working on there yeah. or like whatever it is or like we do like a mind map all over it it was oh, such yeah, a cool I idea that. and you could put stuff underneath it so we'd have like yeah. these big a3 revision sheets for every exam or a what's big than a3 a2 revision sheets you put that underneath and they could just write all over oh, it oh you could annotate it really poems useful. like that they did that in english yeah. as well yeah it was such a good idea at least one listener is going to have this idea and they're going to do it is it is a hundred percent yeah it, it sounds amazing um, but i used to at the beginning of every lesson 
like the naughty classes would draw themselves three strikes mm. and all I had to do then was walk over and rub it out ah. and it was brilliant and sometimes yeah. they'd add another one in um but I knew which kids it would and I'd do it in a red pen like a red board marker and give them yeah. a blue one so I could yeah, tell so they, you get. um but all I had to do was go and rub it out and it was so easy didn't have to say anything and they'd know what they were doing. And sometimes if they were being like a little bit annoying, I'd rub out mm. half a strike. Half of it. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. you could do a lot of stuff like oh, that. Yeah. So you could be like, this is your warning that I'm going to rub it out because you need to amend your behaviour. Yeah. But it wasn't, there was no consequence to the half. It was just like equivalent of a verbal warning or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what was in some ways good about it is you didn't have to tell them what they were doing all the time and explain why. So they had to kind of self-evaluate as to what mm. they'd done for that to happen. And sometimes yeah. I would tell them, but most of the time I wouldn't because actually mm. they'd be like, oh, I was talking, I need to stop talking. And that in itself was quite beneficial for them. Yeah, yeah. I like that idea. I think um, sometimes as well, like, you know, if they're coming in with trainers or mm. they've not got the right equi- I had one lad and he was... You know, he, he tried. He, no, he did not try hard. I, I'm not. I don't even know why I said that. He didn't try hard. <laughs> but he never had any pens, and I would always give him a pen. And then I say, "You keep that in your blazer, and then you can use it for all your lessons. That's yours." And yeah. then make sure you bring it back. To me. He never brought it back to me. So no. in the end, I used to have a bit of blue tack, and I used to stick a pen underneath one of the science. Co- and I said, "Right, that's your pen, but it stays in my room." So. When you come into my room, I can't help you with all your other lessons, but you're always going to have a pen with me. Yeah. And so that's, that small barrier that was always a thing where I had to give him consequences and write it up on Sims, that removed that really yeah. easily. Yeah. Lots of a big barrier and a bit of blue tag. So, you know, if you can just show a bit of compassion, I think that, mm. that can help. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I used to have just, and particularly the kind of ones where equipment was a problem just a big bucket of pens just Mm. take a pen i don't care i'm not paying for them but take them same yeah yeah it's part of your skill as a teacher isn't it behavior management you've got to sort of read the room a skill that i have not yet perfected i don't think sometimes the right thing but sometimes you sort of do have to assert yourself oh absolutely and, um, and really have to i don't know make them feel like they've met their match so i had a very sassy year 10 oh yeah year 10 class and they were really giving me a run for my money and I was this this was back in a mainstream school at this point and they were giving it you know and their boys mm. were bouncing off each other and they were like you know, the noise was escalating yeah mm. and in the end I sort of found who I identified as the ringleader yeah went on sims I found the name of his mum and dad and I'm gonna use I'm just gonna make up names yeah and I just looked at him in the eye and I just said come on what are, what are Karen and Gary going to think about this, eh? And all of them <laughs> were like, <"Whoa." laughs> I mean, like, I sort of bested him. He was like, oh, fair enough, miss. And then, and then I sort of like, yeah. oh, I'd won. <laughs> yeah, that was excellent. That was smooth. smooth. Yeah. yeah was smooth. It's your own time you're wasting. Ramblings from Beyond the Classroom with Marie and Jodie. There's not a lot they don't know about teaching. We like to finish with a little thing called Two Stars and a Wish, uh, where we pick, well, our stars and our wish from today's podcast. Um, what do you think, Marie? What what stars should we have? Oh, my star would definitely be those Perspex covers on the desk. Oh, really? And the possibilities of that (laughs) are just mind-blowing for me. Mm. The one Um, thing I'd say, if you are going to take this as an idea, is make sure you mm. sand down the sides so that they're not really sharp. Really sharp, yeah, round the corners. Yeah. Yeah, So that would be my definite star from this podcast. What about you, Jodie? What's your star? Um, I have to say, I think it's Sarah learning students' parents' names to kind of... Yeah, that was One of them, I think. Yeah, that's such a great plan. I love it. Yeah, agreed. Are you still with us, Sarah? Yes, I'm here. Oh, good. Um, what would be your star? Do you know what, Marie? I think it's your your uniform idea where it's all sewn together. <gasps> oh, and yeah. Minimises, like, obvious problems. Yeah. Yeah. Get rid of it and then just, just crack on with the learning. Yeah. 
that's the thing, isn't it? It's those little barriers that mount up and stop the learning from Mm. happening. What about a wish, Sarah? Do you have a wish? Oh, I just wish that all kids could have a fair start before Mm. they go to school and make sure they've all had breakfast and, you know, so they're ready to learn. If we could get them to that all at the same starting point, I think that would be the one. I think that's so wholesome. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. such a good wish, yeah. What's yours, Jodie? Um... I feel like this is kind of a little bit selfish after after Sarah's, but uh, mine would be that you just didn't have to do behaviour management, that it wasn't such a big part of the job. Yeah. Because it's like behaviour management, planning, marking are the big three, and none of them are technically teaching. You know, mm. obviously planning leads to teaching and marking is a consequence of teaching, but like, yeah, behaviour management is such a big part of the job. And I kind of think it shouldn't be. But it takes yeah. a whole culture change to change that. And I think in some countries it's not as big a part of the job, but it's not something you can change as a school. It's something that needs to change much wider than just one school. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. What would be your wish, Marie? I think my wish, I was just thinking about, um, about things like after-school detentions. Mm. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if you had an after-school detention, but it was like a yoga session or a meditation Ooh. session where you actually taught them how to reflect, relax, yeah. clear their mind. I think that would work really, really well. And yeah. yet, I've no, I don't think I've heard of anybody doing that. Rather than getting them to write lines or whatever it is, which is a complete waste of everybody's time. Mm. Um, yeah, so that, yeah. that would, and then I'd go and join in the yoga anyway. Yeah. We'd all be relaxed. <laughs> Just something we definitely need after after a hard behaviour session. That's that's what true. Like that? They they used to take the kids to go at like horse therapy. And they used to oh. go and get the stroke horses, like oh, the kids with yeah, who were a bit sort of a more. We had a school cat at one school, and it was quite satisfying to just stroke oh. it. That was just me. I just stroke it when I was there, still working at six o'clock at night, and everyone else had left. Oh, school! Ca- yeah, I love that. I think animals are very therapeutic, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. But that is another podcast again. Yep. Animals in schools. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's Thank you idea. so much for joining us today, Sarah. It's been such a pleasure to chat to you. It has. Um, Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's been You're brilliant. You're very welcome. And if you are listening, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yes, Bye. two weeks. Bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye. This podcast is proudly produced by Beyond. Please bear in mind the views and opinions expressed are those of individuals and may not represent those of Beyond or Twinkle.